So I ended up missing my bus to Houston. Um, but they scheduled me another one for the next few hours. So I'll still be headed to Houston, but I had to get um, a new ticket. So basically, y'all, I am smoking a cigarette. I want to go back into the details about Cynthia because it's a reason why I'm going out here to Texas and I want to go into details about how I got lured out of Texas. So I had a family member that had gotten on my YouTube channel. Um, I had not notified my family because it was time for me to get a new set of people in my life. Um, and it has helped me by opening up with my family as well. But um, I needed a new set of people to tell this information to because a lot of people already knew the information and they was not helping us. So on my YouTube channel, I pretty much kept that to myself. I wanted it to be my secret avenue to put the information out there because they had even some family trying to cover up the evidence for them that I was pregnant in the jail, but mostly that they was trying to do this ritual on me to try to murder me for protecting myself. So it was a, a, a ritual and I had got on my YouTube channel and I started making noise. Like I started getting a lot of views and I had a family member reach out to me and tell me that she knew that Austin was abusing me. And she saw that basically I was receiving donations in Texas. Now, I got witnesses that'll tell you people that's been following me um, that have asked people to help me um, in Texas because they saw how they was leaving me outside. They saw me trying to get into shelters. They saw me struggling out there on the streets of Houston, Texas, and people started donating me money. I set up a GoFundMe account, and God told me that he was behind me receiving the money to from my GoFundMe account. Whoever donated the money to me, the Holy Spirit confirmed that it was through him. And it was it, I received about $1,500 in donations through my GoFundMe. And then I had another way for me to receive donations. And I had some people sending me some donations. And I was able to get into a motel for a few days. And um, I stayed at somebody's house and they had people trying to set me up. Everybody that was bringing me into these houses in Houston, Texas, claiming to want to help me, they were trying to get me rearrested. So being that I shot a gun and that Austin was wounded, um, they were trying to arrest me for something. And God had let me know that around the time that they did the COVID shutdown, and open back up the country that they were trying to murder me in Texas because they had given my son away. So I had sat in the jail on these charges for protecting myself from Austin after he got out of prison. And while I was in the jail, they had sued me for my son. So Austin sued me for my little boy through Cynthia. Cynthia got him a lawyer, and some judge recommended that Austin sue me for my son while I was trying to get these charges dropped from protecting myself for him, from him. And the judge said because I was incarcerated that he could not give me my son. I'm going off of what God said. God said they never should have incarcerated me for protecting myself from him. A lot of people think because you shot somebody that you should have to go to jail for that but according to god according to the holy spirit god specifically said they never should have arrested you for protecting yourself from him and that he was a felon and that i needed to go into details about his charges um he was in jail he was on probation for assault and he has charges for assault so God said that's very important information that I was calling the police. He said they should not have arrested me. So they sued me for my little boy while I was in there. Austin, the man that was attacking us. A lot of people could say, well, that's his child and la, la, la. But the truth of the matter is you're not supposed to keep a woman and a child in um, contact with an abuser. So there is no reason why any judge 
should have given Austin any sort of custody of my son with his record and with the what actually took place. The fact that he was attacking us, he should not have given this man any sort of custody of my child. And Austin was on crack and Austin was staying in Cynthia's home when Judge Tracy Gilbert gave him temporary custody of my son. So when I was released from the jail, I tried to go to the shelter because they had caused me to lose my apartment while they had me incarcerated. Mind you, yes, they were trying to murder me, but they also caused me to lose my home and then denied me into shelters, which left me outside on the streets. And I was trying to find a stable place before this trial. They set a trial that was not for my criminal charges because they had dropped the criminal charges for me protecting myself. And then they set a trial for custody of my son. Now, this was after Cynthia threatened to molest him. She threatened to molest him while I was in the jail with Austin and Joseph and then had Austin sue me for temporary custody of my son, and I won against him. I had to go to court while I was in jail, and I won, and Tracy Gilbert is a judge. He's a white male judge that said that um, he would give me my son after I was released on these charges, and when I was released, Tracy refused to give me my son back. Well, he re he refused to sign the order for Cynthia Overa to return my son for me and signed the order saying that I could not get my son from her after she threatened to molest him as retaliation for the shooting. And they were staging in Texas to have me outside I went to the Salvation Army. I called all of the shelters. They was all saying they were full. And they were making me go into homes with black males that were trying to set me up. And they were on probation. They had charges. The police had put them up to targeting me outside. Um, no home, denied into shelters. And they, the police were swarming around. And these black males were swarming around. And they had caused me to go into homes with them, and they were trying to set me up. So I had fled from these males um, with my free will because I, would, I didn't have charges. I didn't have a reason to be obligated to stay anywhere where people was trying to set me up knowing that I was trying to get my son back. Everybody knew that I was trying to get my son back and they were trying to have me in these environments where the males would have drugs and where they would try to set me up like I was a prostitute. And I fled and made my YouTube channel outside being starved, pregnant, um, and denied medical care and I started receiving the donations and my aunt had lured me telling me that she knew that Austin was abusing me and she would let me come to Little Rock, Arkansas to live with her. So when I came down to my aunt's house, I was pregnant with this baby that I had been carrying for since for a year in the jail and almost a year when I had been released from Texas. And so, um, you want to miss the bus? Yeah, I did. I have I walked far from the building, so I have privacy to talk. So that's why when he came over here, I just got quiet or whatever. But um, wherever I was at, y'all just remember where I was at. So my aunt had 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 me come down there to Little Rock, Arkansas, and I was pregnant with this baby. They had tortured me for a year. I had went into labor where my cervix had started to open to about right here, and they were doing stuff to my body, uh, spraying chemicals in the cell, putting stuff in my food. Uh, poisons and stuff like that and they had me in a segregated housing unit so I had been tortured for a year with this baby and then they tortured me outside trying to starve me and leave me outside and make me go with men that were trying to set me up and denying me medical care so by the time I got down there to Little Rock Arkansas I was still pregnant and the baby was still alive in me and my aunt was trying to get me to go to a hospital down there in Little Rock and I was trying to get her to understand that the United States was trying to deny my pregnancy and because they had tried to crush my stomach during a physical examination at St. Luke's Hospital. A white male doctor had uh, touched my stomach and tried to say I was not pregnant and tried to crush down on my stomach. And I'll show y'all my stomach.
and it's still moving and I'm not poking it out or anything. I can actually suck it in a little bit, but that hurts. So I can suck it in because I've been starved. That's about as far as I can suck it in. And you can still see the little baby bump and that's just me holding it. And that's the little baby right there. That's the little baby. And my blood, um, my blood work is coming back um, negative but the baby is moving at me and so I asked the doctor to do the physical examination because you can feel it you can feel that I'm pregnant you can feel it you can feel the baby moving and everything and the doctor felt my stomach and then tried to crush it and I grabbed his hand and I realized what he was trying to do because I told him that they had denied me medical care in the jail and he decided to try to serve the system and crush the baby illegally and then cover up the evidence that I was ever pregnant in the jail so I ended up running and leaving the premises of the hospital after he tried to do that and I told myself that until the information was put out there and until I had somebody to back me up that I was not going to any more hospitals where they will lie and try to hurt me and my body in the hospitals for being pregnant and so um when I was in Arkansas I was telling my aunt let me put out the information that Austin was abusing me first let me put out the evidence of me and my son in our home and that he had just got out of prison and what all took place before I go to another hospital with these white people trying to crush my belly and lie about my pregnancy for these white people in Texas and my aunt had told me, you're not going to give birth in my house. You got to get out of my home if you're not going to go to the hospital. So I just left because I felt like I just need somewhere to lie down and put out this evidence. I need somewhere where I'm not going to be abused or mistreated, you know, um, and I just left. And I came to Atlanta, Georgia, to get into sh a shelter because Atlanta had a long list of shelters. And I knew Atlanta was a city where it's a lot of homeless people, a lot of people on drugs. And I was like, surely they'll let me into the shelter. I'm pregnant, I'm abused, you know. And I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, so I figured that Atlanta would not be racist like Texas and leave me out of shelters, but they did. So I came to Atlanta, Georgia um, at the beginning of this year, and I was still pregnant with this baby and abused. And when I got to the shelter, I told them what they did to me in um, Houston, Texas, and that I was pregnant and that and here they come with them sirens and stuff because they still trying to pull a uh, blood ritual on me. And every time I start telling about the information to the case, they start coming with these loud ass sirens and stuff because I'm putting out the information. You tried to murder me and a child in my body. So I went to Atlanta and this was trifling as hell for the people in Atlanta to do this, you know, because you don't give in to racism. As a black community, Atlanta is, has the, the part of the community that I was in was pretty much a predominantly black community. And for them to have did this was, it was a disgrace. For, uh, to black people for them to have did this to me. So I came to Atlanta and I told the women at the shelter, um, my name Andrea, my name is Andrea Jones. Um, I got into the shelter. I told them that my child father was abusing me. I shot him. Um, I was pregnant and they tortured me and this baby and I need to come into the shelter. And they let me come in the shelter, but they staged for me to have to be put out of the shelter after about three or four days of being in the shelter because I had bought a fetal heart monitor and I had posted the baby's heartbeat on my YouTube channel. And I had started putting out the pictures of me and my son from our apartment. And I started telling the story that Austin was abusing us and that they were denying my pregnancy and that they took my son from me so they threatened to molest my little boy so I started a series called child abduction which is a reality series about my life where I just pretty much tell everything that's going on in my life with my struggle to get my son back and so these black women specifically her name is Rochelle Frazier she was a program director at the Salvation Army at 469 Marietta Street in Atlanta Georgia and a black woman that was a security guard named Officer Graham a heavy set 
a security woman and these black women decided that they were going to serve the system and Rochelle tried to um, fight me and staged to have me arrested and she Officer Graham tried to fight me too knowing that people had not confirmed the baby they tried to fight me which could have resulted in the death of the fetus right there on the property at the Salvation Army at 469 Marietta Street so by this point my YouTube channel had already got a certain amount of views all over the country when I was in Texas because my family had reached out and found out about my YouTube channel all the way from Arkansas and in Atlanta, Georgia. So by this time, my YouTube channel had gotten all of these views to where even the women at the Salvation Army knew who I was and they decided that they were going to try to work against me and serve the devil because these women um, who have uh, given over custody of my child to Cynthia Vera in the courts and Tracy Gilbert courtroom are Satanist. And so I was telling these women at the shelter that I was pregnant and they knew. So they decided whose side they was going to be on, that they was going to be on these child molester side and put me out on the streets in Atlanta. I only had enough money to get a ticket to Atlanta and get into a shelter. So that left me on the streets of Atlanta, Georgia pregnant. And they made me go into an apartment with a man named Marcus Mitchell and he was trying to set me up and starve me so basically what they did in Atlanta was kind of sort of what they did in Texas so in Atlanta they were having these black males bring me into locations saying they would help me they had charges they was on probation uh, some of them was pedophiles um, some of them was these witches and warlock type men that's in the same coven as Cynthia Overa in Texas. Now this coven is nationwide and is worldwide where they are Satanists, they denounce the Lord, they denounce Jesus Christ, they worship Satan, and they do pedophilia. They molest children. They do things like this in the coven and they help each other continue to operate in society normally. They help each other be able to keep their jobs. They help each other um, co cover up their crimes and things that they commit against children children and continue to go on with their lives, driving their cars and living in their houses and working at their jobs, knowing that they're pedophiles and they're, they're affiliated with other pedophiles. And these pedophiles are in all different uh, walks of life and they're in all different uh uh, parts of offices. So it's pedophiles in the uh, is in the White House. It's pedophiles in the courthouse. It's pedophiles on the police department. You know, and they're all in this coven where they cover for each other, and they'll help commit murders with each other. And so. Um, I ended up having to go into these houses with these black males and they were trying to starve me in Atlanta. So every time I was in a location where I, I was getting the rest and I was getting enough food and you could actually see the baby developing, they would hurry up and put me out of that location and starve me on the streets of Atlanta. They were closing down restaurants when I had money, trying to stop me from going into the restaurants and ordering food in the dining areas. And I went through this in Atlanta up until this month. Um, and they were trying to set me up like a prostitute uh, with having men take advantage of me for the help that I was trying to get from the state. So that could try to paint me out like I didn't have a right to come and try to get my son back from this woman. So once I realized what Atlanta was trying to do, I had started asking for donations for somebody to help me get a ticket to make it back to Texas because the Holy Spirit had said when I was in the shelter, when I posted the baby's heartbeat that I'm pregnant with, I posted the baby's heartbeat. And God has said that she's going to put out that evidence. So he was saying the main reason why they're trying to put her out of the shelter right now is to try to stop her from putting out the evidence that this white woman, uh, Austin's mother, is a child molester and that she has her son. And they're trying to stop her from putting out this evidence by putting her out of the Salvation Army. And God was like, you're going to put out the evidence. He said she's going to put out the evidence that Austin was abusing her, that she's pregnant, that they threatened to kill her baby in the jail, that they tried to murder her before the trial, that she was protecting herself, and that they gave her son to Austin's mother, Cynthia Overe, and that she's a child molester. That's what God said. And he was like, uh, that 
uh, them putting me out the shelter was not going to stop me from putting out the information. So they pretty much tortured me all around Atlanta. You will see me yelling, screaming, looking distraught because they were trying to stop me from putting out the information that Cynthia was a grand witch in a coven and that she is a child molester. So I did put out the information as hard as it was. I put out the information and by the time I started trying to get me a ticket out of Atlanta, it was hard to keep food in my mouth, clothes on my back, and get a ticket as well. And I was scared. I was afraid um, because I had put out so much information about this lady, and they already tried to murder me all over Texas. They're very racist in Texas, and Cynthia is not by herself in this coven. It's pretty much damn near all the whites in Texas that's in this coven and molest children. And so I was afraid because they even got the police that are pedophiles involved trying to set me up to be murdered as well. And so I was kind of afraid to go back to Texas and God kept showing me that I was pregnant. He was saying that was wrong for what they was trying to do to my baby in Atlanta and my body because I had already been abused in Texas and Atlanta just should have helped us. They should not have tried to join in with this tirade or whatever you want to call it with this abuse on a pregnant black woman for protecting myself. And so I went hard on Atlanta and I told all the houses and locations where they had me in for the most part. And then just recently, I had pretty much told everything from the jail, from Austin abusing me all the way up until it was time for me to leave Atlanta and God came to me and God was like, you got the right to go to her house. He was like, you have the right to go to um, Cynthia's home to see if your little boy is alive. Oh, yeah, that's what he said when I was in the shelter, when he said that um, that I was going to put out the information and that I was going to back to Texas. So God was saying they're going to try to stop you from making it back to Texas. And they did try to harm me in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, they even had a man pull a gun on me right before I left and um, God was like, you're gonna make it back to Texas. So now I'm making it back to Texas like he said I would, and I almost could not even see the day where I would be able to make it out of Atlanta because it was so hard for me after I got trapped in Atlanta. Once I realized they were not gonna help me and they were gonna try to set me up, I was very afraid outside sleeping on the benches trapped in Atlanta, Georgia with what they were, they were having black gang members, black men, um, swarming around me, trying to harm me for this coven. And when she said she was gonna molest my son, I told y'all she said she was gonna do it with Joseph Austin and the Black Freemasons and the police department that had the information about the evidence, the Conroe Police Department. She said she would allow men that was in the coven that worked and women that was in the coven. Uh, it's a racist coven um, that worships the devil and they worship white people. And um, she said she would allow people off of the force to molest my son and while he was in her custody and that they these police officers were racist and that they wanted to retaliate against me for shooting Austin and that they wanted to cover up the evidence that he was abusing me and simply because they were white and simply because um, they felt that white people had um, more power over black people that they would molest my son as retaliation for me shooting a white man in self-defense and what they claim is their country. So they claim America is their country and that that gives them the right to take my little boy and threaten to molest him and cover up evidence that a white man was abusing me. And so, um, and also they claiming that it giving them the right to cover up my, that I was pregnant. So this is what the starvation and stuff was about. So God, was, they were also trying to starve me in the shelter as well. And I was wondering why they were doing that, but they kept doing it. And that's to try to keep me from showing that I'm with child and that this is the same baby I've been carrying since the jail. And they done had all kinds of people 
trying to starve me to stop me from showing. And it's when I get by myself and I make a way for myself, that's when I have enough food and I'll be somewhere eating and I'll be showing and I'm not poking it out. It's not a tumor. It is a baby. And it hurt like hell when I don't have enough food because we done been through this month after month after month and that shit hurts. And God said that they were stopping me from developing properly by causing me to be missing meals and starving me and stuff like that. He was like, let them know you're not able to develop, that you're pregnant, but you're not able able to develop um, and make a video about starvation in America. And I did that. So I did everything that God told me to do. And the Lord was like, um, you're going back to Texas. You're going to make it back to Texas. So now I'm making it back to Texas. And he said, and he said you go he said she's going to see if her son is alive because Cynthia is a child molester and this came from the mouth of God this came from the mouth of the Holy Spirit and Cynthia has already told me that she is going to hell the words that came from Cynthia's mouth was that she had given her soul to Satan and that she was sick and that when she dies that she's going to hell so when God confirmed again and said that that you're going to Texas and you're going to put out this evidence about her threatening to molest your son because Austin was abusing you and you shot him and that you're pregnant still and you're going to put out the evidence and you're going back out there to Texas to see if your baby is alive and then God said he better be alive meaning that Cynthia would try to do something to my little boy while I was in uh, Atlanta but God was telling to her don't try it he better be alive and that she was a child molester so I'm on my way to Texas and God told me a couple of nights ago that